Welcome back. It's still Plots Politics. The report you saw immediately we went on break. What's the protest that happened today? And uh, talking about the protest, hundreds of protesters took to the streets of several Nigerian states to demand for a better government and welfare of Nigerians in another edition of the Revolution Now protest, which organizers said is meant to force the government to do more to improve the welfare of the masses. This year's demonstration tagged National Day of Action took place simultaneously across major cities in Nigeria in commemoration of the first anniversary of the Hashtag Revolution Now movement, which held on August 5th, 2019. Joining us to discuss this is Belumi Olajem Bessi, a co-convener of the Coalition for Revolution Now, and Nelson Ekujumi, a public affairs analyst. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Thanks for having us. Yeah, let me start. No, evening, yeah, let me start with the uh, um, a member of the protest groups, uh, <laughs> Mr. Pelumi. Um, uh, please educate me. Thank God, you're a lawyer. Uh, some have said that is it right for another protest to take place when the case is still in court on the validity or not the validity of carrying out that protest last year. Okay, well, thank you very much for having me this evening. Well, I'm straining myself to hear you very well, but I will respond based on things I believe I can uh, take in from what you said. Uh, let me quickly say that I am not a member or a convener of the revolution now. But I'm a Nigerian who believes in the Revolution Now struggle. Okay. Sorry for that. I do not believe there's a convener for Revolution Now. I think Revolution Now is simply synonymous to freedom of the Nigerian people from the shackles and manacles of political oppression. And that is why you saw me during the protest. And I also believe that the protest was given back to as a result of the initiative and the drive of Comrade Omoyele Shore. However, going into the issues as raised by you, if I understand. Yeah, the thing is that, you see, every Nigerian have right to protest when they are not comfortable with what government is doing. I believe it's the best opportunity for us as people to show our displeasure as to what government is doing. And so that we can have a same society, we can have a government we can all be proud of. Nigerians came out in 2015, and of course... Yeah, I, I guess um, there is a problem with the network. But let me speak with uh, Kujumi. Uh, what do you have to say? Uh, I understand that uh, both, uh, both of you are off the line, uh, we will try to reconnect. But uh, while we were looking at that, I was just talking about, uh, if you can hear me, if you're in front of your TV, I was asking that we understand this case is still being addressed in court. And the last time we remember when uh, Mr. Omoyele Shore was released is the fact that he was given some conditions to even stay back in Abuja and not move beyond that place. So what has changed was my question in terms of carrying out revolution now protests, not just any kinds of protests, but with clear description that this is the one year anniversary of revolution now. What is your take about the protest that was uh, reenacted today? Well, thank you very much. I think the truth of the matter is that protest is an inalienable right of every man or woman because even our constitution, even you know, uh, acknowledges that. That is why it's part of our fundamental right. But naturally, the right to be aggrieved is, you know, is, in, is human. That is why it, when people gather to protest on any issue, so long as that gathering is not inimical to public peace and, you know, law and order, I think the society should acknowledge that and try to make sense out of what the protesters I've gathered about all the message they are trying to pass across. Uh, because um, some, some, as much as uh, the issues raised are quite uh, sellable, a lot of people seem to like it. But we want to look at the angle of the law. Uh, revolution now, it's a word that is still debatable in the court of law as we speak. 
So uh, do you think this is right in any way? Because all of us should pounce on the police for that kind of action if they've truly erred in, on the side of law. Well, the word evolution we all know is about uh, the legal overthrow of a government. It is not about the legal way of you know taking over power. So one could be one could say that should that could have been part of reasons why the police uh, aborted the rally. And uh, it is important that when we want to embark on any course of action as citizens. We must always recognize that we operate a country that is governed by laws, such that our conduct, our utterances, must be in tandem with the provisions of the law, so that we are not seen as persons who are agents of destabilization. Because if the society is in chaos, even the right, you know, to protest, the right to hear our grievances, you know, will not be will not be available to us. We will, be, we will only be running after. Uh, the right to life to ensure that our right to life, you know, is protect, protected. So, organizations or individuals who are engaging in activities that, you know, are been sanctioned by the constitution must always recognize that, you know, that right is not absolute. Okay, uh, let's look at it. I, I, I'm sorry, I have to expose you. You've been <laughs> you've been a protester for many years, and I've seen you yes. on many protest grounds. But there is this yes. conflict that comes up from now and then. The, the court has ruled about it that you don't need permission from police. You only need to inform the police. And I saw a clip where the policemen were working with these protesters. And at the time, the protesters were telling them, enough is enough, leave us alone, don't be part of this protest. So where do we draw the line so that we know that we have right to protest, but the police has a duty to also monitor the protest? Yes, the, the law, the court has made it clear that when you want to hold a protest, you can only notify the police for security concerns. But the police does not have the right to determine whether you should hold a protest or not. That right is constitutionally guaranteed, and it's even a natural right. But time and time again, we have seen a situation whereby our security apparatus see every gathering of people to ventilate their grievances on issues of national importance as a threat to the state, and it shouldn't be so. We, we recognize the difficulty that the police, you know, encounter, you know, in maintaining law and order. Because people can gather, are, are claiming that they are gathering for a particular cause. Meanwhile, they have other agenda apart from the cause they have advertised. So, but the police must learn, you know, to be civil, must learn to, uh, to give like a modern police that is on top of it, this game. I ensure that when people are gathered together in any if any uh, location, that the police will be there to monitor development, such that when such gathering portends threat to public peace, the police you know, will do will take the necessary action and do the needful. Okay, probably this might be my last question, since uh, we are not able to reconnect with Pelumi. Uh, in this protest today, do you think police has any form of justification? the way they treated the protesters talking about today, because they fired canisters directly at these protesters. Well, the protesters have uh, itemized their grievances. And listening to their grievances, reading through them, you will recognize that you know, the response of the police to that gathering you know, is not uh, uh, civilized enough. But be that as it may, we are also not private to information available to the police that must have made them, you know, to be that tough with the protesters. Because a lot of times why we recognize the fact that the police should be around is because protests like, are likely to be hijacked by state urchins, you know, to perpetuate evil, even though the protesters are not on the same page with these uh, uh, outlaws who have, de who have determined that, look, this is a window for us to unleash violence on the society. So for me, I think it is important for the police to explain to the Nigerian people 
why they have done what they did with regard to the protesters. Because from what the pictures we have seen, the protesters were only carrying placards. We never see any of them carrying any arm of any kind. It may be even a stick. So we wonder how they could have considered themselves to, you know, uh, into a, a, a group that was threatening public peace. So the police, the Nigerian people deserve an explanation from the police for why they uh, visited the protesters with cans of tear gas and other acts, you know, to abort the protest. Okay. Thank you so much, Nelson Kujumi, for your intervention. Despite the network, you're able to drop your thoughts. And I think your thought is clear enough on this protest. Thank you. Yes, yeah, and to our viewers, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take, especially on the controversial hate speech fine. Please don't go anywhere. Hate speech is indeed a controversial bill. Despite strong criticism against the move, federal government seems adamant to this outright rejection by many sections of the media. No matter how good the intention of this move, the jury is out that the move is anti-democratic and should be jettisoned either through NBC code or through an act of parliament. It is safe to say that the voice of reasoning should not be allowed to drown. The campaign against this draconian move should be resisted by all. It is time for government to drop the idea and find another way to curb hate speech if it in indeed is a major problem bigger than the insurgency, bigger than the pandemic, bigger than bad roads across the country. And that is my take for tonight. Please join us tomorrow, same time, for another bumper edition of Plots Politics. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeindi. Saying bye for now. <laughs>